Welcome to Scorched Earth and a general reading for the sign of Taurus, Sun, Moon or Ascendant for the month of February. I hope you will. just like to take the opportunity of uh, thanking you all for sticking around. I know I was gone a little longer than I said I would be, but the exhaustion was real and I didn't actually even notice until I stopped. Um, and then in addition to that, there were all sorts of uh, real life things that needed my attention. So kind of what energy I had had to go into that. I appreciate you waiting and I appreciate you. Thank you for doing that. There will be uh, an extended at the end of this reading if it resonates with you and you'd like to uh, go a little bit deeper. The link is down there in the description box. And I've also done an overview, six month overview from January to June for each of the signs. There's a link down there also in the description box to that. Of course, if you uh, support me on Patreon at the higher tier, all of that is included in your uh, price. So you know, if it's something that you're likely to, to want to look at, you know, on a regular basis, I'll really work out better for you there. So we're using the Llewellyn Tarot for you today. Tarot for you today. Let's have a look and see. I have three cards for Taurus, please. There's the first one. Drifted out beautifully. We have the Hermit. That's interesting. Good energy. Virgo. Ah. Cards for Taurus, please. Thank you. There you are. The Hierophant. Right in the middle. And could I have one more card for Taurus, please? It's coming towards Taurus. February. Ooh, King of Cups, Scorpio energy. I like it very much. We've got the Eight of Cups at the bottom of the deck, and that's that's beautiful because it does indicate moving away from not just emotion, or not just situations that are not serving you in one way or another, but also emotions that are not serving you in one way or another. And I noticed that behind that we have the Seven of Cups, which is something that often talks about illusion. You know, the illusion of choice or the illusion of of <sighs> the nature of the options in front of you. And then we have the devil just behind that. Yeah. And this would say to me that there's been a level of identification of those things to which you have been chained, particularly of an emotional nature, recently. It's certainly borne out by the presence of the hermit here. So let me get a deck to clarify. And then we will get to the meat of this, okay. I'll give these a shuffle too. So, why is the home here for Taurus, please? Is that Seven of Cups again? Lovely. Ooh. And the Knight of Swords, that's interesting. Okay, and why is the home come here for Taurus, please? Four of Pentacles in reverse. Love it. Ooh, there we go. Three of Cups. And then why is the King of Cups here for Taurus? There's a lot of cards flying out to the right here and I don't like that. You've got to jump to the left. It's my arbitrary rule, but I'm sticking with it. All right, why is the King of Cups here for Taurus, please? Thank you. We have the Ten of Swords. I like that. Ooh, powerful combination. Ooh. <laughs> Do you know, um, I actually did a reading for a Taurus a couple of days ago. Um, and and there was a theme that came out in that and I was like, that's really interesting. I haven't done the Taurus reading yet. I wonder if something similar comes out for them. Well, looks like the answer is a resounding yes. We have the King of Wands, the Knight of Wands and the Hierophant again. This is wonderful. We also have the Strength card at the bottom of the deck. Now that's, it's Leo energy, but <clears throat> it talks about growth, right? So we love this. Talks about growth, you know, surviving through adversity, not only surviving, but thriving on the other side of it, right? Followed by the Queen of Pentacles, a real understanding of one's worth, right? And 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 a real attention to uh, 
your needs first, right? We're talking about self-care. And then we've got the Ten of Pentacles underneath that, right? Security, stability. Yeah. These are all cards that came out in, in the Taurus's reading. If she's watching, you know who you are. So, <clears throat> oh, I'm so happy about this. This is wonderful. Let me just get one. Yeah, we're just going to put the John Bauer to the side here just for added clarification if necessary. So the very first card that you've got is the Hermit and that, it, you know, it's the card of Virgo in your recent past. But it talks about the state of contemplation. Right? Specifically, it talks about... Um, stillness cultivating stillness within right I, we all know the spiritual received wisdom is that all the answers you could ever you know ever have cause to seek lie within you and that's absolutely true right that is an absolute tenet a staple tenet of spiritual work and and internal work everything is inside you and the depth to which you know, you can understand things is exactly equal to the depth that you prepared to put the work into you and really travel within, right? Those answers are there for you. They'll come up. <sighs> because you hold all the wisdom of the universe within you. Right? It's true for everyone and it's, it's true for you, Taurus, right? Everything you could ever need to know right in here and you are really starting to understand that in a way that that perhaps was quite tricky i think for a lot of the rest of your life not because the answers weren't there or that you couldn't perceive them but because there was there was noise in between it, it was like white noise like static in between you and the answers and that was the overthinking kicking in there now underneath we have the seven of cups and we have the knight of swords now the seven of cups is exactly as i described before it's particularly relevant that this one here, this this chap is in the dark, right? There are lots of options available to him, but actually the ability to, to be able to discern between them is something that he was really, really struggling with at this point. I'm just going to shut this window. And it was always, for, for a very long time, it seemed like it didn't matter really how much effort you put into something. Those answers never really got any closer. And all it really did was increase the noise and increase the static. And 2020 for you was about pulling down that static or, or whatever it was, whatever beacon it was that was emitting that sound at you, right? So... <laughs> We have it here with the Knight of Swords. Now that's Gemini energy. There's a certain mental restlessness associated with Gemini. <clears throat> but there's a purity of thought, there's a clarity of thought, and there's a, there's a speed of communication that you now appear to have been able to develop with your internal space. You know, perhaps, perhaps you've taken some of the advice that I've, I've, I've mentioned before about looking for those really strong emotions when you have them, like, that's the point that you stop and you pull back and you examine exactly what it is that you're reacting to because I will tell you like 100% of the time it is not what is in front of you. It is, you know, the fact that what is in front of you has triggered something within you, you know. Otherwise you would be approaching everything with a state of grace and just being like, well, this is how this is and this is how this is and that's all fine, you know. That huge emotional response to something, whether it is fear or a feeling of negativity, a feeling of worthlessness, sadness, you know, anger too, you know, all of these things are signposting you to there being something there that requires your attention. And I think that you've been able to open this dialogue with yourself very successfully. Tell me about this Knight of Swords, please. Oh, swords. I have the Temperance card, wonderful. Oh, and the Justice card. Oh my God. My God, Taurus. <clears throat> we have Temperance, we have the Justice card. Right? Temperance is Sagittarius. It's all about healing. It's about balance. It is about bringing healing to that, that white static. Whatever it was that was screaming out and making all of the noise to you, that is a process of healing now. Right? That conversation that's going on. And we have the Justice card. It feels like finally balance is being brought 
to to your state within like a, a state of grace is is really i might call this video that a state of grace it's not only the end goal but it's something that you are really starting to appreciate is possible for you we're talking about real life results mm -hmm. things that i've been talking about in the abstract for you know um <clears throat> a year a year now taurus with you you know and now starting to yield results that you can measure right and when it comes to your peace when it comes to cultivating and maintaining and protecting your peace you are far far stronger than you were this time last year because of the willingness to do the work now in your present energy we have the hierophant and you know whenever we have a sign show up like this in their reading it's a really authentic authentic presentation of the energy of that sign right you are here you're not just here once you're here twice <clears throat> you feel much more like you which is odd because you feel so much different to the experience that has characterized being you for all of this time we're getting into something much much deeper here much more foundational about your energy I and mean, let's face it like Taurus is foundational energy. It, it speaks of the earth. There is nothing more grounded, nothing more foundational than pure Taurian energy. Now it's clarified by the Four of Pentacles in reverse and the Three of Cups. And I love this for you. You know, the Four of Pentacles can indicate a need to release things, right? It, it indicates that you are holding on too tight to something. Your grip has loosened Taurus. And we've we've spoken about this before, and, and um, well, with that ten of pentacles being here, and all this, I was like smiling about before. What we're talking about here is the cultivation of, of of security and stability for you, safety for you internally, right? This has always been an external endeavor for you. This is why Taurus is have. You have wonderful houses and you keep your money straight, you know, because your material security is super, super important. What you never thought before this point, you know, before the point that you are at now, is why that was so very, very important to you. And the simple answer is, is because it was something that you could control. Right? When everything felt like it was in turmoil within, there was your little corner of the universe that made sense to you, where everything just was right you know the the profound lesson the Taurus is beginning to understand now you as a collective and you individually are starting to understand is that that state of security and safety and stability is something that needs to reside within here and then actually it doesn't really fucking matter what's going on outside of there you know you're probably always still going to have a nice house and you're still going to have you know good, good jobs that you work hard at you know be respected in whatever it is that you do because of that work ethic but there's a little less of of you you know abdicating that feeling to your external things it's all about being in here and so because controlling your environment is the way that you've made yourself feel safe before seeing now that actually that wasn't working quite as well as you thought it had and that that state of stability needs to exist in here you've relinquished your grip on a lot of things that you would have controlled and held very tightly before I notice we've got the Wheel of Fortune at the bottom of the deck there. This has been a profound soul lesson for you, Taurus. Tell me about this Four of Pentacles, please. Thank you. <clears throat> we have the Page of Wands. And the Seven of Wands. Yeah. That makes sense. What is building in you is a sense of potential for the future now, right? The Page of Wands for me is like a precursor to movement. Not the movement itself, but a rising sense of enthusiasm and excitement about what the future may bring, right? Now notice that this is one's energy, so this is about living. It's actually, the whole one suit is about being present, ultimately, right? It's how, how you experience everything in the immediacy of it being right in front of you. And there's, there's 
there's something shifted in you now, right? Where once you were really, really happy to stay in one spot, and in fact, that was your preferred state, was to stay in one spot emotionally, you know, physically, or materially, or however it was, right? Fixed earth energy. I know what I like and I like what I know, right? That kind of thing. There is something starting now to come in. And, and what is it? It's a desire to expand your horizons. Now that could be in the material sense and the physical sense, you know, you could be wanting to travel. You know, like, I, I quite fancy going and seeing things that I've never seen. Eating food I've never eaten, there you go, there's a big one. <clears throat> smelling things, touching things, experiencing things that I have not experienced anymore. I mean, 2020 was a year of great restriction for everyone and even the Tauruses were starting to get to the point where it was getting to them. Right? Now remember that, that this year, well, if you've watched the 2021 videos and I get in the beginning, I do a sort of global overview, it's about 25 minutes long and one of the resounding themes of that was movement huge movement this year in all sorts of senses and that could well you know be talking about people moving right not just you know to the other side of town but maybe moving across state or um you know county or even moving country uh, maybe you've had enough of where you are you're thinking about starting somewhere new but in a broader more energetic sense it is like literally there's a sense of wanting to expand coming in right we've seen this for you right emotionally we've, we've joked about it like it felt like you've sucked your ribs in and kind of balanced on your tippy hooves for for a very long time now you're permitting yourself to to take up space maybe your immediate environment is actually a little bit restrictive and you're like oh i need a little bit more a little bit more space around me you know Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. The other, um, the other card that we've got down here is the Seven of Wands, like more wand energy, and that's, that's sometimes defensive energy, sometimes guarded energy, mm -hmm. sometimes it's protective, but it's released, right? So I think that we're going with defensive here, right? You have understood now how your defense mechanisms have kicked in over and over again in your life. In fact, to keep you <laughs> stuck in situations where you're essentially repeating the first, you know, six to ten years of your life over and over again, but with new people, you know? <clears throat> Now that whole, that uh, the quote that's attributed to Einstein, and I'm not even sure if it if it is Einstein, but you know the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. It's almost like in that moment of detachment that you've been able to cultivate for yourself, where you realise that you are not your emotions and that you have tried to control your environment and. Uh, there's been very little about your internal space that has been relaxed and you know uh, able to receive that you realize that you've been like a living embodiment of insanity for for years perhaps for decades you know trying to do the same thing over and over again in the same way and expecting a different result what is changing now is you it's, it's you changing the way that you go about things and you've been pleasantly surprised with how this has occurred for you. Right, <clears throat> the second card that we had here underneath the Hierophant was the Three of Cups, and that's my emotional support card, right? But it talks about truly equal friendships, I think. I, I like I like the idea of female solidarity with this card, right? It's something that I cling to, it's something that, that exists, although I have been, uh, unfortunately, subject to demonstrations that it's not universal let's put it that way right <clears throat> just started to lose my faith in it after a little while but it's researched it's come back and underneath we have the magician and we also have the nine of cups 
where social situations were sometimes a burden to you because you were always putting everybody else first. You were doing all the heavy lifting in all of the relationships that you were in. I'm not talking about personal relationships now. I'm talking about those that are still very close outside of you. I, I, I'm actually a bit of a relationship anarchist, right? So I think that it is hierarchical friendships and relationships and stuff like that aren't really a thing with me if you bring value to my life then you are just as important as you know the next person and there's no hierarchy brought in by the fact that we happen to be in you know a romantic relationship everybody's important by their own merit right not by the status that they occupy in my life so we have the full card at the bottom of the deck here and i like oh and I love that. And we've got the Empress sitting behind it, right? There is a new version of Taurus that is out in the world now. And, and it's a beautiful thing because it's a much more relaxed thing than ever there was before, right? Your relationships are all feeling like on a much, much more equal footing. And remember I've said before that Taurus have this issue with the shadow, but right? you have no problem whatsoever in owning all of your your. The bits of you that other people disavow, the difference is that you've used it as a stick to beat yourself for a very, very long time, okay? What Taurus really struggle to do is accept that their gold is in their shadow. Now, what you tend to do when you're going around and you're, you, you know, you're meeting people is you'll, you'll see someone, okay? And they have the most incredible qualities. And you're like, oh my God, this person's amazing. And you pick them up and you put them on this pedestal. And from that point on, you know, it's kind of like, here is this person who is, you know, unattainably awesome and they're my friend and I love them and I'm going to over-invest to shit everything that I have in them there and then I'm going to be disappointed eventually because it's not reciprocated on the same level. The point that was always missing in that was the fact that those things that you perceive in someone right as really admirable qualities, they're acting as a mirror for you. You see them because they exist in yourself. Right? And so part of what, what Taurus has been working on this year is kind of tearing down that plinth and going, hello, awesome person. I too am an awesome person, can be friends. An awesome person, number one, saying, yes, of course. And then Taurus, awesome, going, brilliant. There's an equality there. Right? You're looking everybody in the eye because you've always deserved to do that. You just had to notice. <clears throat> You've always had much more power than you thought you had, but you were putting your energy into the wrong place. Now you are switching it down to, to you first, right? Making sure that your emotional needs are met by you. It means you're coming into, into uh, you know, social interactions on a level, on a part now. And that isn't the need to, to prove yourself over and over and over again with things, right? It's, it's just, you, you're just showing up. You're just being, right? That one suit there. You are enough. So we come to the King of Cups here, and I, I like this. This is Scorpio energy, and it's what's coming towards you in February. This is emotional mastery. Now, I think the King and Queen actually sit level as being like the culmination of the suit because they are the, the feminine and masculine expressions, right, of, of the energy. <clears throat> The, the, uh, the masculine being the active version of it and the feminine being the passive version of it, right? You receive this sort of thing. There is an active control of your emotions going on here, right? Getting more comfortable, ever more comfortable with who you are, right? <clears throat> but then we come to these cards underneath here, right? Notice that you're tacked on the end here again, right? So you're coming through in all ways down here making a new start on the planet right but then we have these cards here now i am going to call this reading a state of grace because what this is is allowing things to end right where you might have clung so hard right maybe sat on the thing that you should have let go of, right? I see you being able to release this in, in a much easier way. We have here an ending implied by the Ten of Swords, and sometimes it's a very uncomfortable ending, right? 
<clears throat> it can talk about humiliation, it can talk about betrayal, but it doesn't actually feel like this for you. And right? it doesn't feel like it's a specific event that occurs and you're like, well, fuck this and you're off. It could be, and I'm going to pull another card for it in a second and just see which way the land lies with that one. It feels like something... It feels like a perception, it feels like an attitude rather than a, a specific event, right? It's you actively taking care of your emotions, it's actively taking responsibility for your emotions and in doing so, having the ability to invoke this state of grace towards anything that might be ending, right? Now the reason that I was giggling so hard was because these two cards came up, right? in fact the, the page of wands as well for the Taurus personal reading that I was doing, because there's a sense of adventure, there's, there's, a, there's a need to start experiencing new things, there's a need to bring fun into your life, but there is a real desire to go after something new, right? A sense of adventure is what is starting to come out here. Now these are the cards of Leo and Sagittarius respectively and they are both very very good at living in the moment, for appreciating the moment for exactly what it is and not expecting anything from it, right? <clears throat> Taurus energy is always about, you know, planting seeds and then nurturing and caring for it, right? But there aren't any shortcuts with Taurus at all, ever. It's earth, right? It's a slow process, a stepped progression. The one suit can be here one second and gone the next. Where it feels to me, because like the only, the only sign here that you're missing from the fire suit is Aries. But I feel like in this case, it's this page of wands who's indicating the Aries energy, right? It's a, it's a willingness to experience new things. It is that spark. It is that beginning. The knight and the king of wands, the way you take it, you, you, you go out with it, right? You, you go out into the world with it. Tell me about this. Oh, hang on, right. Let's go back to the ten of swords. Tell me about the ten of swords, please. Thank you. Yeah, we have the Knight of Cups and we have the Six of Pentacles, right? It's this cultivation of peace. We've got the Eight of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck, yeah, and it's followed by the Hanged Man. Now, well, the first thing I heard when I saw the, the Eight of Pentacles was, actually, you're being more discerning about what it is that you put your work into. And then, you know, we've got the Hanged Man directly after it. You have changed your perspective about those things that require your time, your care, your effort. You have achieved this level of being able to discern what what requires long-term investment and what can just be enjoyed for the moment. But coming out under the Ten of Swords here, it's letting things end whatever it might be. And it doesn't feel like a great big catastrophic ending. It feels like just all sorts of things, you know, maybe maybe friendships that you've been trying to hold on to for a long time and it's quite clear that they've kind of passed their expiration date and you haven't really noticed because what you were just trying to do was put more effort into it because that's what you've always done when things, you know, weren't going to plan or you just need to work harder. But this is saying, actually, you're understanding now that things come in and things go out and that's okay. That's the natural of order, order of things. The things that are meant to stay are going to stay regardless of whether you, you know, well, they're just going to stay. And the things that you try and over-invest in, if they're never meant to stay, they're just going anyway. You run the risk with those things that are meant to stay, that by over-investing in them, you actually shorten their longevity anyway, right? It's always got to be measured moving forward. And we've got the Knight of Cups and the Six of Pentacles. There's that state of grace in play, right? Where things have been hard, where things are now starting to you know, move towards an end, allowing them to go, right? Coming from a hard place with this Knight of Cups, but a gentle one, right? One where it isn't a reflection on you if something ends, right? Because frankly, Taurus, if everything new that came into your life over, you know, I don't know how old you are, you could be 20, you could be 60, 
however many decades that you've been out in the world as an adult, if every new thing that ever appeared stayed, you would run out of space very, very quickly. Right? That's that's just obvious, right? So, so some things come in and they stay for a very short amount of time and then they leave again. Other things will be around for longer. Some things may be lifelong, right? <clears throat> but you can't control that. The only thing you control is yourself. And so you have the grace to allow those things to come in and out, right? It, it's a, the Six of Pentacles is a card of reciprocity. It's a card of balance. It's a card of an even approach to everything that is guided by the heart first and a heart that understands that they need to look after themselves and themselves alone. Everything else comes in, comes out, right? So, ooh, <clears throat> tell me about the King and the Knight of Wands, please. Wonderful. We have the Empress card out first and the Ten of Pentacles. Wow, fucking hell. So this is this is where, why we were talking about here, right? <clears throat> there you are. There's your Ten of Pentacles. That Ten of Pentacles exists within you now, Taurus. You are the stability. You are the security. You are the safety. You carry this with you wherever you go. You do not need to control your surroundings at all because you will always be okay. That phenomenal Taurian power. And it's huge, right? It really is. And it's one of those things that's so huge. It's a bit like... A bit like cows, right? And bulls, obviously, but I spend more time around cows than I have around, around bulls for, for obvious reasons, right? <clears throat> I used to live in the Yorkshire Tales, a very farming community, right? uh, and I moved up there, age 20, from, you know, what I thought was a, a reasonable-sized town, you know, about 100,000 people living in it at that point. But it was, it, it was a decent sized town. And then I moved up north to a town and it wasn't a town. It was, it was smaller than my parents' village that I'd, you know, moved from. I'd gone from what was effectively a metropolis right into the arse end of nowhere, which was bright like big city as far as the Yorkshire Dales was concerned. Anyway. You see a lot of cows, you see a lot of sheep. I tell you what, sheep are a lot bigger than they, than you think they are when you get up close to them. Mm? Actually quite sizable animals. <laughs> cows are enormous. If you've never really stood next to a cow, like, their heads are like this. And fucking, and the cow is in front of you and it's here and it's just like, hi, I'm a cow. And you're like, fucking hell, you're actually enormous. Bulls, Jesus. When you see them in the field, you're just like, oh, there's a bull, oh, it's a big stocky thing, big bull. You get close to a bull, you can feel the power, you can see the power, right? The funny thing is, the bull knows it, but the cows don't. There's such a difference in attitude, right? So you get close to a cow and it has no idea how big it is. It's just like, hi, I'm a cow. And you go, all right, you're a cow. They're a bit like, I don't know, mentally, cows are a little bit like Labradors. Trust me, like I, I lived next to a field of cows for a very long time. And they play and they gamble about, you know, and when they get a bit bigger, they can't really be asked quite so much and they kind of move around. But, but mentally, they like to play. <clears throat> Bulls, on the other hand, I straighten around being like, I'm a fucking bull. Don't fuck with me. I'm like, I don't see you're a bull. You're actually a bit scary. I'm gonna be walking a respectful distance around you, right? <clears throat> All of this time, you have been a bull with the mind of a cow. Taurus, that, that's been the thing. You've been so completely unaware of your own power, your own ability to be able to manifest things for yourself, right? And really affect the world around you just by existing, not by putting all the effort into it, but, but just by existing. And so you've gone from a bull with the mind of a cow to now a bull with the mind of a bull. You know exactly who you are, you know exactly what you want, and you know that nobody can fuck with you. <laughs> like, no one. <laughs> Saw a sign once on a field. It was, um, 
It was actually in Cornwall, down near uh, down near Boscastle, which is actually pretty much my favourite place in the entire country. I love it. The whole place just thrums with old magic. But I've been for a big walk around there with my family and uh, we came past this field and it said, do not cross this field unless you can do it in 9.8 seconds because the bull can do it in 10. <laughs> I was like, okay, kids, we're not walking through this field. <clears throat> That's you, right? You're walking around with a sign on you that literally says, I can fucking sprint across this field in 10 seconds. I, I might look like a big lumbering thing that doesn't really move very much, but hell, I've got some fucking speed and some power behind me when I do. So, <clears throat> this feeling here, a bull with the mind of a bull, is now feeling emboldened to start participating in life in a way that you haven't done before, right? Maybe you're getting it to your feet, maybe you want to move around, but there's certainly an ex a, a sense of uh, a readiness for some excitement, a readiness for some adventure in your life, right? The question is, what kind of adventure do you want? Because hmm? now is the time to sit and think about it. In the month of February, Right? Because what you want, you will bring towards you. You will make it happen. We've got the magician energy in here, right? You are so much more powerful than you've ever realised, but now you're starting to get a sense of it. And now you're starting to feel emboldened to do things that you haven't done before. So the simple question is, what is it you, that you, Taurus, want to do? Because you've achieved a level of, of emotional stability that you never thought possible. You are now feeling a sense of safety, security, security and stability that you never thought possible. You have relinquished your grasp on all of those things that you used to try and control, including people, because, you know, people pleasing is, is a nice way of trying to control people, right? You're trying to control the way that they see you, right? You've relinquished all of that. And now you're like, I'm here for the fucking fun times. I'm here to go and experience something new. So what do you want to experience? February is the month where you really consider that. What's going to bring you emotional fulfillment? What is going to scratch that itch that has just suddenly appeared in you, Taurus? Oh, I, I can't tell you how much I fucking love this reading. Right? Compared to where we were this time last year, this is fucking magnificent. And I hope that you're proud of yourself because my heart is literally bursting with pride for you at the moment. It's absolutely staggering. I cried, feeling all quite emotional. Anyway, I'm going to go over to Vimeo now and let's pull some more cards. Let's have a look at this. Um, go a little bit deeper if that's something you're interested in. You know what to do. Uh, if not, no shade. Know that I love you all very, very much. I'll see you soon. <laughs> 